everyone, it's me, Crafty Witch. Welcome to my channel. If you are a returning subscriber, thank you for popping in. If you are brand new here, subscribe. Hit the bell icon so you know when I upload. I upload randomly. So um, this way at least you'll know when I do post a new video. So anyway, I want to do this video on seasonal shadow work and how to incorporate that into your own practice if you so choose to. And if not, hey, that's okay. Feel free to take what you can from this. If there's something in here that doesn't jive with you or whatever, well, then don't use it. Um, substitute it, change it, tweak it, do what you want. So I do shadow work on a seasonal basis. So I live in a place where I have four seasons, fall, winter, spring, and summer. And so for myself, for my own personal practice, I incorporate that into my practice. <laughs> so for fall, I've got my notes. So if you see me looking down, I'm looking at my notes. So for fall, I've got, um, it's the, the whole preparation time. And I've already posted a video earlier today about fall preparation. So this just kind of falls into that as well. But it is preparing yourself mentally, emotionally, spiritually, and physically. The, the four quadrants of your whole being um, to look within and take that internal inventory of your shortcomings, any areas that have been stunted, any areas that have been shunned, any weaknesses, all that kind of stuff. But taking a really honest inventory of that. And sometimes that can be difficult for folks. So it's doing that. It could be areas that have experienced extreme trauma, past, present. Um, it's not a time to do bashing. It's not a time to bash yourself or berate yourself for any of your shortcomings. It's not a time of finger pointing or blaming other people. This is it's just doing an inventory. And you need to kind of get outside of yourself to do that kind of inventory uh let go of your ego let go of that as much as you can and try to be as objective as possible when it comes to doing this inventory when you are doing this self-analysis because that's what you're doing right now you're analyzing so it's like okay i i yell too much i swear too much i get um easily triggered about such and such topic or maybe you are a jealous person maybe that jealousy um, then stems into um, other areas of your life so it's like really taking a totally honest self-analysis of your whole being and really identifying those key areas that need some work so that's what this is about um <laughs> so during this time in the fall um there's a couple of animal allies that are are useful to to reach out to during this time and those two animal allies are squirrel and the goose the canadian goose <laughs> so you just gotta hear me out here so with the self-analysis that's the time you're gathering the facts you're gathering you're preparing you're gathering and so that's where the squirrel medicine comes in or the squirrel magic or the squirrel ally i don't care what you want to call it but you can tap into squirrel to the collective consciousness of squirrel and squirrel can really help you uh, seek out and find all those little bits of yourself that um, need to be worked on or addressed or dealt with. So that's why we or I tap into squirrel during the time like in the fall. And as well with regards to goose, I am thinking not of the big white kind of mother goose, but of the Canadian goose because our Canadian geese in the fall, they gather. So like starting in September, they start gathering and right through to well October um, and then usually around the end of October 
they have already flown south um, or sometimes we still have some that linger around through the November and then they fly south. It really depends. It's really totally, I keep looking out my window, um, but it's really dependent on the weather at that point in time. If we still have um, green grass and it's still fairly mild, our geese will stick around longer. If we have snow, they're usually gone by then. Sometimes they stick around for a little bit when the snow first comes and then they go. So the reason why I utilize goose medicine or the goose as an ally in the fall for doing this kind of shadow work is because goose goes like our, our Canadian geese go on a very long journey <laughs> down south every winter. They fly down south every winter, they hang out and probably upset some of our American brothers and sisters. And then come spring, they head back home and they come back. But it is a long journey and it is a hard journey for them. It's they need to gather, they need to be prepared before they even set out on this journey. So they they eat a lot, they come together, they kind of gather their, their little communities and then they fly south. And that's a tough journey for them. And sometimes it can be really perilous too, because also there's hunters and, you know, there's a lot of hunters that will, will go and hunt geese in, in this time of year. So it's a long, hard journey, and that's what this whole thing to do with shadow work is. It's it's a long, hard journey. It's not easy work, because if it was, well, it really wouldn't be shadow work, now would it? So it's going to take some work on your part. It's going to take some effort, some endurance, and some really like, facing some hard facts about yourself and working through that and... That's why we tap into Goose, because Goose has the endurance, has the ability to navigate through those perilous conditions and to get to their final destination. Um, so that's why we tap into Goose during that time in the fall. Um, oh, mirror and reflective magic is also really um, handy during this time, during the fall. So whether you have black mirrors, also um, I used to use a black bowl and I would just fill it with water because it would look like black ink kind of thing, but it's just water. Use that for scrying um, magical purposes. And when you utilize, or even just a regular mirror, you can utilize that as part of your spell work for doing shadow work by focusing on like, you're looking at yourself, I recommend and strongly, strongly recommend because mirrors are portals that you cleanse and seal your mirror first so that um, what you want to do for this is you want to be able to really kind of look into your own soul. Not so much about trying to reach you know, different spirits out there um, in the spirit world and are trying to communicate with them. What you are really wanting to do is like kind of look into your own soul and have that kind of come through through your spell work. So that's what I do. Um, and this whole season of fall, it's it's the acknowledgement that you have work to do on yourself. We all do. None of us are perfect. No matter how great you think you are, no matter how old you are, you're always going to have room for improvement. You're always going to have the opportunity to better yourself if you so choose, right? It's always a choice. Moving on into winter, now once winter comes, now it's the, it's the retreat inwards. We've, all, we've looked at ourselves in the fall, we've 
come to acknowledge that, yeah, there's work to be done. There's these different areas here. And we started preparing ourselves mentally, physically, spiritually, emotionally for that work that is to come. So that's what fall is. Now we move into winter. Now winter is that retreat inwards. It's now that you've analyzed your shortcomings and the areas that need to be healed or embraced or worked upon, now comes the hard work. Healing of past or present traumas, um, changing negative or bad habits, um, old thinking patterns, really doing that kind of work. Um, and it's not always easy and it does take some time. Um, it requires inward action and inward movement as we journey inwards into ourselves to deal with all that ickiness that's inside of us. And it's also hunting down answers and bitter truths that come to the surface. We know those answers already and we know on a real deep subconscious level we already know those answers we already know what those truths are and sometimes it's hard to accept that and it's hunting down those answers on a very conscious level and it's working on those issues it's processing and it's also taking time to rest as you do this this is exhausting work it's not simple it's not easy it can be really exhausting so you need to also incorporate rest periods throughout the whole entire process of course but especially during the winter and it's also a time of decompressing and really what we're doing now in the winter is we are really unpacking our bullshit <laughs> we are unpacking laying all of our cards out on the table so to speak and saying okay this is this is what it is and um sometimes that could be difficult too for folks during this time bear wolf and owl are really powerful allies to tap into and anybody can tap into them during that time if you feel called to tap into another uh animal or other form of being maybe a certain mineral maybe a certain rock a certain gemstone go ahead and incorporate that into your your practice absolutely this is a time of standstill even though it's it's inward motion inward journeying um, but it's also a time to to stand still and to face whatever it is that you're facing head-on and you can use the rune Isa for that, the standstill rune. And for tarot, you might want to incorporate like the hermit card. Maybe use that with some meditation practices for during journeying inwards. And this whole winter time is it's it's also like that time of acceptance. You've done that and <laughs> Just about said a, the wrong word here you've already done the analysis in the fall now you've come to the acceptance like man yeah i really got some stuff i had to work on right so and now you're starting to unpack it all and bring it to the surface and um it can be tough work for some folks and then in the spring as we move into the spring it's now we've accepted that already from the winter we've accepted that okay we've got stuff we got to work on so in the fall we've identified what we need to do and what we need to work on we've started to prepare ourselves mentally spiritually physically emotionally to deal with that then in the winter we started doing that inward work start to journey inwards we start to unpack all of our crap and really come to this place of acceptance that holy crap yeah i gotta deal with all this stuff i gotta work on this i need to work on that that kind of thing and then in the spring now 
you are learning to come to a place of embracing your your shadow nature, your shadow self, and to, to merge your shadow in your light. And it's a time, it's the reunification of, of spirit, of your own spirit. And you might want to include like ceremonies like soul retrieval during this time. It's a very shamanic type of um, practice, but it's very helpful when you are doing shadow work. Um, the uh, sticky poplar buds come in the spring. It, they're like uh, really sticky and they got kind of like, it's almost like a little bit of sap. It's almost like a glue for folks that have ever parked their cars underneath those trees you know the damage they can do to the paint job on your vehicle. So if you can gather some of those buds that have fallen naturally, um, you can utilize that too within your spell work because you want um, that, that acceptance, that embrace, you want that to stick, right? So use those sticky buds from, from the trees when they come out. Also, Pussy willows are a good ally during that time. Pussy willows, that's a time of comfort, love, embrace, acceptance. So using that, and plus willow itself is a very healing um, plant. So utilize pussy willows as well during your spell work, during the spring for this. It's a time, it's, there's new hopes, new dreams are starting to formulate. You've already addressed or looked at you know, the, the negative or the bad habits you would need to dealt or deal with back in the winter and the fall and then in the spring. This is when it's really important to start really incorporating new thought patterns, new positive habits. Um, maybe if you have addiction issues, maybe this is the time when you've come to a place of like, you know what, I need to hit up those AA meetings or, you know, I... I need to really start doing this or that and you start incorporating that into a daily practice for yourself so that it becomes a lifestyle, uh, a positive habit. Um, it becomes part of your, you know, spiritual practice, whatever it may be. And during this time for animal allies, there's the deer, uh, which is represented by the, the fawn, um, that very kind of innocence, self-love, and all that kind of stuff. The, the deer will help guide you as well um, during this time. The little bird chickadee, the little chickadee birds, um, they stay with us all winter long. Um, they stay with us all year long. And they are an excellent messenger. Like some, some birds, for instance, like ravens and crows, are really good for being messengers, especially ravens um, or crows, but ravens um, for going between the, the physical world and the spiritual world. But the chickadee bird is really good for going between your mental self, your emotional self, your spiritual self, and your physical self. So being able to travel um, between those four coordinates within your own spirit, you can tap into the spirit of the chickadee. Um, crows and robins are also um, good birds to tap into for being messengers. And then for robins, that journeying, um, bringing, um, they travel far <laughs> to come back up here. And so they bring with them that that new hope for uh, a better life and that kind of that renewal and um, kind of that, that new energy that we need to carry on with these positive changes that we are dealing with or incorporating into our lives. Okay, and this is a time of forgiveness and new beginnings. So forgiving ourselves or maybe things that we've done that weren't so great to other people or towards ourselves. Um, maybe we used to cut and self-harm ourselves. Um, 
this is a time of forgiving ourselves. Um, forgiving ourselves for perhaps um, all the negative self-talk that we have in our heads. You know, maybe calling ourselves down, putting ourselves down, making ourselves the, the brunt of jokes when deep down that's really um, hostility that you're expressing towards yourself. So being able to forgive ourselves for that, for to forgive ourselves for, for things that um, maybe we've done to other people that wasn't so nice. So it, it just comes to forgiveness and that's spring. Now moving on into summer, summer is, this is a time now you've done the acknowledgement of the fall. You've done the, the retreat inwards of winter time and the acceptance during the winter time. And in the spring, we've learned about forgiveness and about creating that new growth within ourselves and, and that kind of thing. Now in summer, we've reached an area or a time of wholeness, of expansion. We have a new direction, a new purpose. Uh, we've got some new goals we're, and we're slaying it. We're doing awesome. We're, we're really working through this stuff and we're really have come to a place of being more self-assured because of all the work we've been doing since the fall, the winter and the spring. It's a time of, you're, you're like in your prime and your vigor during this period of um, shadow work and now it's a time to play and it's a time to rejoice and it's a time to celebrate and to know it's okay to do that even if you're not 100 percent done whatever it is that you need to work on celebrate how far you've come so far on your journey of all the shadow work you've done that's hard work and it's not easy and it's really tough and it can really wear you down and now you've come to a place, you've been tackling all these different parts that need to be addressed or dealt with. You've come to a place of being completely honest with yourself and it's okay. Celebrate, enjoy life. Um, it, it's a time also of spiritual evolution. You can tap into um, otter is a really good energy to tap into for that playfulness, um, having fun in the sun. You can tap into dragonfly as well during this time. Dragonfly is the messenger between this world and the spirit world, and you can tap into that as well. Eagle medicine, um, being able to see the bigger picture now. Whereas in the fall and in the winter, a lot of that, was kind of incorporating mouse medicine, you're looking at yourself very closely, right? But now you can tap into eagle medicine and now you can see the bigger picture, how everything was so interconnected, good and bad, and how it played a part in different areas in your life for good or for worse, right? So um, that's where tapping into eagle comes into play. And you can also tap into the humble bucktooth beaver. <laughs> so uh, somebody might be like, why would you tap into beavers? What did beavers offer? What kind of teachings or lessons do they offer? They are the builders and they build incredible uh, dams and their homes are within the dams and they have their own solid foundation that they build upon and then they build their home once they have their foundation built and it takes a lot of hard work they chew down the trees that they need and haul the trees you know it, it's they put in a lot of work and by putting in that work for themselves to create their their own stable secure home with a 
really solid foundation for themselves so that they can be happy and healthy little beavers, right? They inadvertently and unknowingly have created a positive impact on their surrounding areas. Now, for human beings, sometimes we see them as being a nuisance because they dam up the, the water flow. And, you know, unfortunately, some people will blow up their, their, their little homes and, and things like that. But from an ecological perspective, they serve a very vital place um, in the ecosystem and them creating their own solid little homes and and that kind of thing has a beneficial impact on the surrounding wildlife um, and vegetation and everything in that area so it's akin to ourselves when we do that hard work on ourselves to get ourselves in the right mind space and the right head space to make sure that our own spiritual emotional mental and physical foundation is solid and we've done all that hard work we become better people and by becoming better people we impact those around us our families our friends our colleagues our communities our countries so that's similar to how beaver was, right? So that's why I tapped into beaver medicine or beaver teachings at that time. Beaver is a great ally. So it's that time of building your whatever you've been building is either complete or nearly complete by this time. And there is this alignment and a, a balance between all these different areas in your life, between your emotional area, your mental area, your physical area, and your spiritual area, those have come into to harmony, into a balance during this time. And because of all of that, and all the stuff you've been going through, identifying what you need to work on, working through that, coming to accept what you need to work through, coming to embrace those areas of yourself that have been shunned away, disowned, all that kind of stuff. Now you've come to a place of actual self-love and total reunification, self-love of your whole self. And then you've concluded a whole year of shadow work by incorporating the different seasons or you could do it quarterly if you don't have different seasons where you live. Um, but this is just one of the ways that I incorporate shadow work into my own life on a yearly basis. Um, that's, that's what I like to do and I just I thought I'd share that with you guys. Do you guys incorporate shadow work into your own practice? Do you incorporate it into your practice on a yearly basis or maybe do you only do it maybe during the month of October or November or December or do you do it as it comes up um, what inspires you to incorporate shadow work into your practice what was some of the the most beneficial things that have come out of your own shadow work um, yeah, I would love to hear your, your guys' uh, opinions down below. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please let me know. Um, yeah, and if you're new, consider subscribing. Hit the bell icon so you know when I upload because I upload these randomly. <laughs> I don't have a set schedule. Maybe I need to work on that for my shadow side um, to try to figure out why I... I, I don't like to be restricted. I like kind of doing my own thing when I want kind of thing. So yeah, maybe I, I need to, to work on that as well. But yeah, consider subscribing and um, let me know if you guys found this useful at all. Um, feel free to adapt, to change it, to tweak it, to make it your own. Maybe you don't connect with any of these animals. Maybe none of them are in your part of the world. Um, 
look to see what animals are in your part of the world and what possible spiritual teachings that they might have for you. And then maybe you can incorporate that into your own shadow work. Um, yeah, so that's it for now. Ciao.